Hey, what's up, everyone? For that pencil with another Path of Exile video, and in today's video, we're going to talk about the tornado shot swap for our lightning arrow artillery blister build. I'm eating some gingerbread cookies because that's what you do in Sweden in uh, the winter. Um, they're heart shaped because I love you. So, there's a couple of things we need to think about when we're going into tornado shot, and the first one is you want to go omni or not. You can do an omni swap. Or you could choose not to. I think at the beginning of the league, you're not going to be doing an Omni swap anyway because there's not that many crystallized Omniscience amulets around. But I'm going to go over a very brief version of what you need to do to transition into Tornado Shot just as a regular skill without Omni. And then what you're going to do when you want to swap into Omni. So as an example, this is my uh, build I've got here. We've got, you know, uh, Sushi's bow. We've got a lot of very, very decent gear. Uh... Amazed Blood. There's a few mirrors into this build, and this is, you know, if you really, really want to invest into Tornado Shot, if you only want to play one, one build, the whole league, then this one's going to be super strong. And obviously, there's going to be lots of options available with the dual ascendancy classes that we get, or the secondary ascendancy class, the additional ascendancy class. Maybe we'll have a little uh, extra, you know, item slot here, another, another backpack inventory. But... Let's get into the first part. So I have here, um, I got here, this is the crit swap from our build guide video that we put out a couple of days ago. So I'm gonna put, try to put here a link to that video so you can go and check that out if you have no idea what I'm talking about. And this is the sort of end-ish game version of that uh, build, uh, the crit swap section. And then there's a tornado swap and the tornado swap is oh, we could do like a comparison that's always useful so if i compare the tornado shot with the crit swap version then most of it's the same most of it's pretty much the same uh but with tornado shot you absolutely there's a couple of things you really really have to get you have to scale projectiles so you want lots of projectiles and you want lots of projectiles speed because if it's slow it feels ugh. and obviously it's a crit version as well so we're just going to drop this whole wheel over here, we're going to drop the blind. We're going to drop the onslaught. We're going to drop the uh, you know the far sight and the accuracy and stuff. Um, the accuracy rating can be a bit of a difficulty later on, but we're adding in uh, this projectile speed and projectile damage, and we're having 15% more projectile speed, and that's great for our mastery over here on the bow mastery, which is increases in reduction to projectile speed, also applies to damage with bows. So we get lots and lots of projectile speed, which is very important and then a bit extra as well from this mastery and then we're going to take this primeval force wheel here we're going to go on the uh left hand side because the effect of non-damaging elements is okay but shocking and igniting stuff really really helps us out a lot more uh, we're going to take heart of oak here as well because it's just a decent amount of uh life for just a couple of points it's pretty useful so this is all you really need to transition to tornado shot there's lots of other things you could do, but f for the tree alone, this is all you would need. There are a few other things that you would want. So obviously, you, you, you want to have a six link. You want to have a six link for Tornado Shot because you want to have the uh, the appropriate links in there. you got to have a really good bow. you got to have a six link bow or you know, a very high elemental DPS bow. I would suggest around uh, 800 DPS bow total probably like at least 700 elemental dps we're still testing the swap out a little bit on stream so swing by the stream we're live every day on life without pants uh twitch.tv slash life without pants we're gonna link up here and this is what you absolutely need as a baseline now there are a few other things that you could get and we're going to go into those as well so you used to be able to get anomalous blood and sand and one of those things, uh, you know, I can't remember if it's the blood or the sand stance, but it gives you, uh, is it 50% increased projectile speed? But we're probably not going to get that anymore because it's probably no longer a thing uh, due to the transfigured gem system. So that's a bit up in the air. Uh, it's a shame if that goes because that's really, really good. I think uh, for... For this, you probably want to take far shot as well because you're going to be having uh, a lot or you don't need to take far shot. Again, it's a preferences, but you know, chaining is great. Far shot could be even better. It's uh it it can be a little bit personal preference. 
I think the accuracy nodes also on the tree are very, very important as well for the tornado shot swap as well because you don't get a lot of accuracy um, when you move into Omni. So I would be taking these as well. So that's it for just like the initial swap. Now let's start talking about the Omni swap. All right, so when you go Omni, there are a few things you want. Obviously you want to be ailment avoidant capped so you want to be 100% ailment avoidance and we get that in this way we get 20% uh, from this wheel here so this is 4, 4, 4 and 8 so that's 20% in total uh, we get 50% on our boots so we're getting 20% from the implicit and 30% from a uh, from a suffix that we're crafting with uh, essences and then we get another 30% uh, on our body armor so We'll talk about those gear pieces in just a second, but that's how we get our ailment avoidance capped. We also want to have spell suppress capped as well, and for that we're going to get one roll. Uh, you know, a for me, I always cho choose a fractured roll on my boots, so 14% there. And then we want one other roll as well, if we don't want to take the inveterate wheel. But honestly, this wheel's really, really good. And you should probably take it because this the reason I don't have this is because I've got this you know legacy uh tattoo of the Romako Makanga, so this is a skills fire and additional projectile. And I need to take this node here and this node here in order for this tattoo to work. And in three twenty three, I'm not gonna be doing that because there's no tattoos, so I'm gonna be taking these two here. So what I would recommend is you take the inveterate wheel here, and you don't have to have this uh roll on your body armor as well. So let's talk briefly about our gearing. Crystallized omniscience, obviously you need that. I would recommend a twenty percent roll or better, and you should put it in POB, because that's where it's gonna tell you if it's good or not. Uh obviously you're going to attribute quality it with catalyst so it's going to come from ultimatum now and we're anointing utmost intellect on the tree and utmost intellect i think is up here and it's yeah plus 40 percent intelligence eight percent increased intelligence easy enough so that's your omni okay so i've got craft of exile up here this is how i would make the boots i would get a fractured t1 max rolled suppress roll here on the boots and then you just make, yeah, quickly make this into a rare one now Armor evasion is, I think, best, and these boots will probably cost at least three times the cost of just a pure evasion base with this fracture on it. So if you're looking to save some cash, this is a really easy way to do it. The evasion base ones will be like one divine, and these will be like three. So that's what they've historically been at. So we're just going to uh, get our essences here, and I believe it's yeah, loathing essences. So we're going to spam loathing essences until we get a T1 attribute or T1 chaos res. Doesn't matter which one it is, but both of them, that's what you want on this. And that's going to, you know, we're going to fill up our suffixes by doing that. So I'm just going to spam here for a little bit. In fact, no, we could just, uh, we could just say that this dexterity roll is, uh, is the best one. So at this point, you're going to either, there are two options here, you can do uh, suffixes cannot be changed, which is a prefix, or you can use a wild bristle matron, if these are available. Uh, wild bristle matron is a beast that uh, comes from Einar's memory of the sacred grove, I believe, or Einar's memory is harvest beasts, actually, that's probably what it is. And it basically adds a meta mod to, yeah, Add a crafted meta modifier to a non-unique item. And as there's only one suffix, uh, one prefix that can roll, only one meta mod prefix, which is suffix that can't be changed, if it's like 100 chaos, then you're probably going to save yourself one divine by by using it. So I'm just going to use uh, craft this on to show you how it's done anyway. And then we're just going to veil chaos. Bomb. And if you have full prefixes, you can uh, use Eldritch Crafting and uh, I believe it's uh, this one to, we can put that on and then we can use an Eldritch Annul and we remove, hopefully it's a one in three to not remove the prefix and then we can craft on mana and that's just from the bench add T3 mana on there and that means when you unveil this then your, I 
think it's guaranteed to get move speed in some version. So let's just go ahead and unveil. So we've got 25% increased move speed, 10% increased move speed if you have been hit recently. Uh, and then we've got life and some other stuff. So you're always going to get, let's just uh, undo that and then unveil again. And uh, we didn't get move speed here. That's interesting. I've never, I've never actually had this happen to me. Um, so in that case, you've got to start from the, you know, you've got to, suffixes cannot be changed again. But uh, it is, so it seems like it is possible for you to not get move speed, but there's, you know, 100% chance to avoid being chilled. There's lots of, lots of move speed ones. I think the best one, best in slot is this one here is a uh, chance to gain onslaught for four seconds on kill. That's very, very strong. Um, so we can just take this one. And then if you have a free prefix here, then you can throw in uh, you know, crafted life. And then that's the boots. And honestly, these boots are the thing that you can start off with. You can do this. You can do these boots when you don't have uh, om Omni already. Obviously, you wouldn't want dexterity. You'd want strength because the build is a little bit strength and intelligence starved. So hitting uh, T1 strength or T1 intelligence. Oh, you can't hit intelligence on boots. Sorry, on these boots specifically. But you could hit T1 strength on these, and that would be perfect for, as a you know transition set of boots. And then you're going to uh, use the Eldritch Crafting. You're going to uh, change this until you... Uh, I have chosen Action Speed. And you have to get Chance to Avoid Ailments. Chance to Avoid Elemental Ailments. Because then we've got you know the 30% roll here. In between 31 and 35% Chance to Avoid Elemental Ailments here. And then you get uh, a bunch extra from your uh, Ickers as well. And that gives you 50% Chance to... Uh, avoid elemental ailments, which is incredibly strong for one gear piece. Let's make some body armor. This is the one I have here. It's relatively easy to craft. I don't know how many divines. It honestly depends on uh, what kind of economy the you know the the game has. But I went for spell suppress on this, and you don't need to. You really don't need to go for spell suppress on this. But this is at the point where uh, you could swap into Omni. So we're going to do it as if we're doing Omni. So let's uh, create a new item. We'll go to body armors and we're going to go strength dex because it gives us a bunch of uh, armor and evasion, which is really, really nice. I'm using a general's brigandine. I'm a brigandine boy, but you could use, you know, dragoon scale if you want or a little MLR. It's up to you. Um, for, for me, this is the one I prefer. So we're going to take this. We're going to put on chaos resistance so we're going to have a fractured so this is you know you ser you live search or you know just regular search for a uh, a fractured chaos resistance you're not going to find a six link one you're probably going to have to six link it yourself um, but then just uh, throw on a uh, uh, a regal and for me again I'm going to be using uh, essences uh, we're going to go with spite so we just hit this a few times and what we're looking for is obviously you know intelligence but uh, we're looking for a strength or dexterity roll either you know uh, or, or spell suppress honestly spell suppress is very very good because it can save you a couple of points on the tree it depends if you want to you know have that uh, reliance on the tree or not so this can be good i wouldn't stop at t3 to be honest i'd stop at t2 or something like that so this honestly this is fantastic uh, this only took us, what, about like uh, six essences. You cannot expect this normally. <laughs> you probably won't get six uh, this in six essences. But this is, uh, you know, we've got uh, essence tier strength, uh, intelligence. We've got strength. We've got our chaos resistance. And then we're going to, again, you could use the wild bristle matron, as we mentioned before. Or you can just, you know, uh, throw on um, suffixes cannot be changed like that. And then we're going to Veiled Chaos again. And, uh, or maybe, you know, you could go with an Ashling. I think that's probably a bad idea. But then we're going to craft on Mana again. And we're going to hope for uh, when we unveil to get, I think it's 30, 31 to 35% element avoidance. Uh, that's That's the best thing for me. Uh, yeah, so here we go. 32% chance to avoid elemental ailments and 35% chance to be, avoid being stunned. Fantastic. And then, provided you've been doing your betrayal missions, then you may have, at this point, a Gravitius 
one. Oh, yeah, here it is. It's the uh, percent increase max life, percent increase max mana. And I mean, we don't really care about the mana too much, but we're going to uh, just chuck this on. And I managed to get 8% increase max life and 7% increase max mana. But then this, this is honestly, this is a fantastic uh, chest piece already. And obviously we're going to throw on some Eldritch Implicits as well, because some of the mods for the Eldritch Implicits are very, very strong. So for example, I've got here uh, Determination has 23% increased aura effect because I'm using Determination, uh, or at least I was, uh, not anymore, so I should probably change that. And then 11% increased effect of non-curse auras from your skills. So that means if you're using precision, if you're uh, using uh, grace or haste, then it's really, really, really strong. It just gives you 11% increased buff effect of those things. And obviously, who doesn't want more evasion chance or who doesn't want more, uh, more attack speed? Very, very decent. And this, you could craft this and be... And, and this could serve you before Omni and after as well. So that's how I would look for that. Uh, when it comes to a belt, then belts are very, very easy. Um, you can, uh, I have a, not here, but if I go to the trade site, then I have a Omni swap. I think I've got a belt thing here. Yeah, so we're just going to be using a synth belt. I think 50C, 100C, no. It's going to be a lot cheaper on League Launch, but this is basically, this is a search. I'll put this, a link to this in the description below uh, so that you can use it as well. But this is just a weighted sum with uh, 13 as the sum and percent, uh, percent increased dexterity, strength, or intelligent as, uh, as the implicit. And also maximum quality zero because... There are two rolls on synth implicit belts, and one of them is 10 to 12, and people will quality those, uh, which will take it to 14, and it makes it appear as if it's the top roll, which is 13 to 15. So and we don't want to we don't want to get scammed by those people. So these are just the regular belts. This is available in Ancestor right now, but uh, these are just the regular belts that you can get uh, uh, synth belts with percent increased attributes on them. So what we're going to do is we're going to let's go to craft of exile now and we'll restart and we'll create a new item and we'll go to jewelry and we'll go to belt and let's say it's a rustic sash but first of all the first thing we're going to do is because it's going to be a synth implicit is we're going to make sure it is scoured which this is and then we're going to uh, quality it with i believe it's is it turbulent no it is intrinsic actually so we're going to use intrinsic catalyst on it. Uh, we only need four because uh, it's scoured. So then we're just going to essence it straight away. And I think it's strength that rolls on belts. We can actually go to the calculator here and uh, check that out. So there are some things that will always roll on, you know, there are some uh, stats that will always roll on stuff. So yeah, strength always rolls on belts or always can roll on belts. So make sure that you're not using a strength essence because when you use your essence here, so we'll just go with uh, a, you know, a, a spite essence, so intelligence, and we're just gonna keep rolling with the intelligence essence until we get a T1 or T2 strength. Um, you could also go with a, uh, you know, a very high roll on resistance. That's also pretty good, uh, especially if you can get all res, that's very, very nice as well. I don't think always can actually roll on belts, but if you get you know chaos resistance, that's also fantastic. Um, and you're looking for essentially uh, elemental damage with attacks is fantastic, life is fantastic, uh, and an attribute is what I would say is the best thing. So here we've got uh, uh, we've got chaos resistance, which is also very good, very very nice to have. Um, you could again use a wild bristle matron on this if you wanted to so you've got two suffixes here but i would want to honestly i would go until i've got uh like strength and one other good thing that's how i would make the belt so just spamming with essences a lot of this is essence spamming and then you know suffixes prefixes cannot be changed and then veil chaos and then block something unveil and then craft on your fourth or fifth modifier and then maybe exalt slam later on so that's how you make a lot of this gear. So let's talk about rings very quickly. 
I think the best thing to do, there's a couple of ways to get rings and one of them is to trade for them. And if you're going to trade for them, then you want to select a couple of things. So you're going to get a corrupted one because they're, they're cheap, honestly. They're, they're really cheap. So you can search f trade for something with two implicits, a percent increased dexterity, percent increased strength, percent increased intelligence. Um, so search trade for a ring with those two things, two of those three things as a implicit. And then, you know, elemental damage with attacks, extra attributes on it somewhere, maybe like a T3 strength roll or a T2, whatever. Um, and maybe chaos resistance or some regular resistances. Those are great. That's fantastic. And that's honestly, when you start out doing Omni, that's probably uh, the cheapest way to get a, a decent ring. Uh, later on, you want to get something like this. So this is a uh, amethyst ring with fractured T1 of some attribute. And I've got uh, intelligence on one and strength on the other. And then you're just going to get a corresponding essence. So, you know, I got fractured intelligence on this one. I took uh, dexterity essences and I rolled and, you know, I used dexterity essences until I got T1 strength. And so then you got a three T1 attribute mod chaos resistance implicit ring and then you're just going to do the same thing that we just said we're going to you know uh suffixes cannot be changed we're going to veil to chaos we're going to block mana and then we're going to unveil probably life we're probably un going to unveil life if you block mana then it's very likely that you uh unveil life and then i just craft on elrion's non-channeling skills have minus seven to total mana cost and that's it and then you don't have to worry about it that that's that could be your ring forever um, I also exalt slam this, so I got T9, max energy shield, which is pretty bad. And on this one, I got uh, T6, max energy shield. So uh, I'm pretty good at slamming energy shield on these rings. But that's how you make these rings. Very, very simple. Um, for your quiver, there's a couple of things you want. This is a ridiculous quiver. You're not going to have this quiver. Um, but you want... Bow attacks fire additional arrow, very important, muy importante. Bow attacks fire additional arrow, and uh, ideally crit multi with bows, because there's not that many places you get crit multi on the tree. To be honest, for us, there could be we don't have many jewel slots available. So crit multi, very very good. So you can use uh, essences to you know spam crit multi until you get additional arrow. I would just go on the trade site and look for something with you know bow attacks fire additional arrow and uh some flat damage some life that's probably all you need to start off with until you want to craft something like this for a helmet tornado shot fires an additional secondary projectile is no longer an implicit that we can get so because of uh, implicit enchant because that's all gone um so this this is actually a pretty bad helmet to be honest it's got t1 intelligence t1 strength or essence tier intelligence essence uh, t1 strength and t4 dexterity so i could actually remake this but again this is we need all that omni that we can get so we are uh essence spamming with intelligence on uh, i i essence spammed intelligence essences on a tornado shot hat you don't need to do this you could go for a uh fractured chaos res fractured spell suppress any of those things like any of those things is going to bring up those stats that you're missing uh just throw a bunch of essences on it until you get something decent and then something is going to be changed veil chaos or don't even veil chaos like i uh i think i just i, I had this just landed on this I, I actually used like four essences on this and i got very very lucky and then i just crafted on uh fizz damage from hits taken as fire damage because then you know it's eight percent of our uh, fizz damage that we don't need to worry about when it comes to the implicits though reduce mana cost of attacks is the best one i think you can get i think it's best in slot because you don't get a lot of mana with this build and that's why i've got the uh elrion veil on both of my rings because it can be very, very difficult to get the right amount of mana for your uh, attack. So reduced mana cost of attacks is, you know, a quarter less mana we have to worry about. And then mana reservation efficiency of skills is also, you know, very, very useful because uh, we get, uh, it means we have more mana to, to worry about. Um, so that's what I would take with helmet. 
Gloves. I'm using Shadows and Dust. That's what my Tornado Shot version has. It has Shadows and Dust. If you don't want Shadows and Dust, then do whatever you want with your gloves. You, there's lots of really good things that roll on gloves as well, and there's some very good implicits too. So another place that you can pick up some Omni, you could pick up some Chaos Res, you could pick up some Resistances if you've actually, you know, if you don't have full uh, Resistances, because with Omni builds it can be pretty difficult and expensive to get Capture Res. So you probably will find yourself wanting a little bit of resistance somewhere. Uh, so that can be very useful. But for me, Rampage, if you don't have a source of Rampage, then Rampage on the gloves is uh, pretty important to me. So that's it for the gearing section. There's another uh, part of this as well. So I'm using um, Inspired Learning with Corrupted Blood Immunity. This is obviously going to be very expensive. I think this costs a ridiculous amount. Um, maybe it's just... 10 divs it's still quite a lot but if you don't have like i said the jewel sockets are quite rare on this build there's a lot of jewel sockets that you might want to get um so when you go also for when you got omni you got to take this wheel as well this is you know obviously mandatory when you got omni and you got the five percent increased attributes that's the only other extra thing but You'll want to get a Lethal Pride as well, or Brutal Restraint, I think is the other version. Um, this is just going to give you, if you see here, I've got uh, something extra, like 5% increased strength. I've got t plus, you know, flat 20 strength, plus 20 strength, plus 20 strength, um, reduced damage from crit strikes. But uh, lots and lots of these, and also the small nodes as well, uh, they give either plus 4 or plus 2 to strength. So, you know, it's extra attributes to our, towards our Omni goals. Um, there is a timeless jewel finder. Let's see if we can just let's see if we can find that timeless jewel finder. You just go here. I'll put a link to this in the description below, so it's very very easy for you to find. But let's say uh, we're going to go over here, and we're going to take a brutal restraint, and um, yeah, sure, that's enough. And then what we want to do is we want to select stats, and we want to say increased strength i believe is this or is this dexterity okay percent increased dexterity oh it's omni so it doesn't really matter which one you go for um and then to just flat dex so plus flat dex and then i don't know let's say we want some life as well you probably wouldn't want that you probably want double damage though because that's oh it's not available on a brutal strength but uh say one of these and then you wanted at least Two flat decks, two one percent increased decks, uh, and then you go over here on the tree and yes, it's, uh, it's, uh, deselect all uh, passives, and then select all notables. Oh no, that's not notables. There we go. So let's say we t we're taking all these notables, or I'm not I'm not using that one pants. What are you talking about? I'm not using that one either. Uh, I would never use Swift Venoms either. I'm not using these two. And then you can ask it to search for you. And it will search through all the uh, Timeless Jewels that there are, or check all the seeds. And it will find these ones here. So this one, these have a weight of eight. So there are, oh, so eight matches with a weight of four, rather. So uh, these are going to have, um, uh, this has got plus to dexterity. It's this, this one particular. 4348 has uh, 20 decks, 5% increased dexterity. It's got 20 decks. And this is just on the nodes that we've selected 4% uh, increased max life, 5% increased dexterity, extra max life, etc. etc. And you can just click the trade button, it'll take you to the trade. And this one, it doesn't have it on trade. Uh, but obviously, there's a few here. So it's at the end of the league. This one's one divine. That's crazy good. Um, this is going to give you a lot of. Uh, a lot of um, damage and Omni as well because obviously Omni is elemental penetration as well as extra resistances. So I'm going to put a link to this in the description below so you'll be able to check out the Timeless Dual Calculator. Obviously it's extremely strong. And also alongside that we've got a cluster as well. So I've gone for uh, attack damage with bow skills and we've got feed the fury, fuel the fight and martial prowess. We're not actually taking fuel the fight, that's right at the back, but 
Martial prowess is a really decent notable. It's, you know, uh, global accuracy, which again, we were a little bit lacking on accuracy in this uh, once he got Omni, because uh, dex is flat accuracy. And we don't have any dex anymore. Like, our dexterity is 32. So we've, <laughs> we've got uh, uh, 64 accuracy baseline. Um, so yeah, we've got martial prowess, which is, you know, increased attack speed, uh, increased attack damage, damage with uh, ailments. So that's, you know, basically only uh, ignites. But then uh, we've got attack damage leech as life and increased attack damage while leeching. And then here we've got a pressure points, quick getaway crit strike cluster. So that gives us uh, a bunch of crit strike chance and move speed if we deal crit strikes recently. And we're always critting because crits are very important in this build. Um, and then, yeah, pressure points is 5% chance to deal double damage from crits and 30% increased crit strike chance. And then we've got uh, a proj damage cluster with repeater and streamlined. And these are very easy to, to craft with harvest. You can get an item level 50 to 67 base and reforge speed. Is it on oh no, attack or caster? Let's just go and do that real quick in, uh, in Craft of Excel so you can see. So... Let's restart this. We're gonna get a uh, create new item. We're going to do a cluster jewel, a medium cluster. Uh, was it projectile damage? And it's gonna be item level in between 50 and 67. That this makes it the easiest to do. So here we've got it and we're just gonna go into harvest and we're gonna reforge caster. Oh, we don't. we can't do that because we need to, oh, there we go. So this, uh, here we've got repeater and eye to eye. So that's the second one. Uh, we get you always get repeater from this basically. So you get repeater, repeater, uh, repeater and streamlined, repeater and eye to eye, and then you and you got some strength, great, and then you could exalt slam this to get oh, some fire resistance. Um, but then you can just keep doing this, repeater and streamlined, uh, repeater and eye to eye with dex, and you can exalt slam this, and you get some a little bit of intelligence, even better. Uh, so repeater and streamlined, repeater, repeater shrieking bolts, repeater shrieking bolts, repeater and eye to eye. So this is. Really, really easy and uh, predictable way to make these uh, jewels. Um, at least repeater and streamlined. Oh, I've got streamlined, even though eye to eye is... It depends if you like being up close or far away. So uh, eye to eye, I believe, is uh, extra damage when you're, when you're very close. But streamlined is just, you know, extra projectile speed. And our speed also applies to damage. So that means... This is a total 40% increased damage notable. Um, so that's how you get these clusters. Honestly, this one, you could do... These these all have attack, uh, I think. Oh, they, uh, well, they have speed. So you could reforge speed, but honestly, I just buy this on trade because it's easier. This is pressure points and crit right away. This is obviously... These are all crit. So you could reforge crit in harvest, and again, I just buy them all on trade because it's easier that way. I've gone for a third of hope. You don't have to do that. It just means that I get a bunch of other stuff, but it does make you know gearing your resistances a lot harder because you know it's minus in between minus twenty and minus ten to all resistances. So it can be a little bit difficult for that. But yeah, so that's the uh, clusters. I think that's about it for the build. This is how I have put together Tornado Shot. Oh, we should talk about flasks very quickly. Oh my God, flasks. We should talk about flasks very quickly. Now, obviously I have a mage bot on at the moment and that's ridiculously overpowered and I'm using Aureus End. Aureus End is great for clear. If you can get access to a cheaper-ish Aureus End, it's gonna be like 20 divs or something. But if you can get access to one, then, then throw it on there. It's fantastic fun. But for me, the mandatory halves on this uh, build are when you're gearing up. When Because Tornado Shot scales with projectiles. Don't forget, Tornado Shot scales with projectiles and projectile speed. Along with other things. But uh, I think I have some gear to save here. I've probably got... Yeah, a Dying Sun. This is... You know, skills for two additional projectiles during effect. Get a Dying Sun. They're, they're going to be a little bit expensive, but uh, the, as your first, like, you know, flask investment, this is huge. So a Dying Sun, very, very good. You could also, if you find you're dying a lot in maps and you don't have lots of Chaos Rays, you could go with Progenesis, but again, it's quite expensive. But it makes you near immortal. It's really, really good for that. 
Um, but obviously, a crit flask, a diamond flask with you know big crit on it, that's that's really really big. You want to get to a very high crit chance. Uh, I've got uh, move speed as well. I've got crit on the move speed, and then I've got yeah attack speed on the the crit. Um, if you don't have a good source of phasing, then a phasing flask is very very good, and you get spell suppress. Maybe you don't need the spell suppress though. But also the regenerate three percent of life per second during effect, really really good. You get that from unveiling. Uh, the the onslaught fast the silver the, the I can't remember what it's called oh it's, we've got some here cinder swallows so these cinder swallows these are you get these from Katarina fights um, and you can unveil this let's go and unveil this one now where's where's Jun and oh I don't even know what that is and it's uh, is one of these so you can get this from unveiling um, cinder swallows you might be able to go to TFT and just buy the craft from somebody. But, uh, oh, let's take that one. I haven't got that one yet. Um, so I would say definitely a diamond flask. You want a silver flask as well because Onslaught is very, very good. Uh, movement speed flask, obviously. Maybe, you know, the, the phasing one is really, really good because phasing is fantastic. You could spend a couple of points to avoid doing that on the tree. So you could, uh, you could come up here and get that. Get the evasion and phasing one there. Um, that's a possibility. And if you find you're struggling with mana, just get an Enduring Mana Flask of Corrupted Blood Immunity. And you solve two things at once. And you can just, you know, hit that whenever you uh, find yourself affected with Corrupting Blood. And it's going to last for a long time. And it will sort out your mana too. So just an Enduring Flask of of Corrupted Blood Immunity. Very, very strong if, if that's what you're lacking in the build. Well, that's about it, I think. And it's been a bit too long of a video, but... That's it for me. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. More than happy to answer questions about this build. But uh, with that, I hope you are kind to everyone you meet. I love you all very much. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.